people are loving the rationals. And so, of course, we need to get on to solving equations. Graphing's down the line, don't worry. But yeah, for right now, equations. Uh, okay, two things. First of all, yeah, how do I solve the equations involving the fractions? And as with many of the past sections, there are extraneous answers. So when do the extraneous answers show up in these sorts of problems? So no meme today. It's going to be a serious one. Math. Yeah, this is we're getting down to it. Okay, so first of all, here's an equation. It involves a fraction on the left. It involves a fraction on the right. And um, as you can see, there's just one fraction on each side. Now you have done many of these problems before. We can simply cross multiply. So we're going to multiply the 4x plus 5 over to this side to cancel it. We're going to multiply the x plus 1 over to this side to cancel it. Uh, and I'll just go through this real quick because you really have seen one like this before. So don't forget that, um, yeah, distribution is going to happen. So when I multiply the 4x plus 5 over to the other side, let's just make sure to put it in parentheses. Same when I do 9 times x plus 1. This helps me to remember to distribute. Um, so 12x plus 15, 9x plus 9. It's easy at this point. Let's subtract the 9x over and get 3x. Let's subtract the 15x over and get negative 6. Looks like x equals negative 2. Uh, I went through that really quick. Now, just so you know, there could be extraneous solutions. Why? How? What could go wrong with fractions? Remember that I'm not allowed to have fractions where I divide by 0. This is not allowed. So if, for example, I have an x that makes me divide by 0, that's very bad. So let's just plug it into the denominators real quick. This one, if I plug negative 2 in, that'd be negative 2 plus 1. Is that 0? No, so I'm good. This one, if I do 4 times negative 2 plus 5, is that 0? No, definitely not 0. So since neither of these are 0, I know that this really is a good solution. It's not extraneous. All right, example two. Now I'm going to show you example two with two different methods. Um, again, as with the complex fractions, sometimes you want to use the one method, sometimes you want to use the other method. This first one is called the combining method. The combining method relies on you using your addition and subtraction skills to, instead of having two things on the one side, get just one thing. Because if you get it down to just one thing, you can use cross multiplication and it's easy. So let's take a look at this. And clearly my LCD, I'm not going to worry about the right hand side, but clearly my LCD on the left hand side is x minus 5. So let's think about how I can make 1 have at least common denominator of x minus 5. Well, don't I just need to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5? And x minus 5 over x minus 5 times 1 is just x minus 5 over x minus 5. And this should make a lot of sense because that actually cancels to 1. So let's combine like terms. I have just an x on top. And then I'm doing negative 5 minus 8. That's going to be minus 13. On the bottom, I have my least common denominator, x minus 5. That was by design, remember. And on the right-hand side, I have 3 over x. Okay, now this is very good because now I just have one fraction on each side, which means I can cross-multiply. Uh, I'll go quick because I trust that you know how to do it. Just don't forget to distribute. This side's going to be x squared minus 13x. This side is going to be 3x minus 15. This looks like a quadratic situation. Let's hope I don't have to use the quadratic formula. You know that you need to get a 0 on one side. So I'll subtract 3x over. That gives me, whoa, x cubed. We don't want to deal with x cubed. We actually did learn how to factor some x cubed. Do you remember that? I certainly do, but I remember all math forever. It's my job too. Hey, this one looks factorable. Uh, I believe x minus 15, x minus 1 will do the trick. So x is going to equal 15 or 1. Now, again, we need to check about extraneous solutions. But we know that it's only going to be extraneous if I end up dividing by 0. So let's take a look here. This fraction, 15 minus 5, not 0. 1 minus 5, not 0. So that fraction's good with both of these answers. How about this denominator? Well, this denominator is just x. So the only way there would be an issue there is if I had an x equal to 0. 
clearly not an issue because I have 15 or one. So both of these are good, no extraneous solutions, LCD method. Okay, so there's another method that you might like to use. Um, this is relying on you, kind of like the complex fractions, it's relying on you finding the LCD of all of the fractions and then multiplying by it. So let's take a look here. Now I have an X minus five, that needs to be included in my LCD because remember I need to kind of include everything that the other fractions don't have. So definitely an X minus five. There's no denominator here, so I'm good. And then here is an X. So my LCD also needs to include that X. So I'm including the X minus five because this guy has it, but the other ones don't. I'm including the X because this guy has it and the other ones don't. So there's my LCD. And I am going to multiply this entire equation by that LCD. And remember, when we multiply by the LCD, it's multiplying the numerator. So think of it like the LCD over one, just like in the complex fractions. So let's distribute it in. When I distribute into the one, I'm gonna have just X minus five times X. Sweet, easy. When I distribute it to this one, let's take a look what happens. First of all, there's this minus sign. So that definitely needs to be there. Second of all, look at this. I have an X minus five on the bottom. This is gonna cancel with this X minus five when I multiply, right? Because if I have something on the top and the bottom, it will cancel and I'll be left with just X. So I'm left with this eight and this X. So eight X. Notice what's happening. All of the denominators are canceling and that's telling me that I'm doing something right. Finally, to keep the equation balanced, let's distribute to the other side as well. In this case, the X on the bottom and the X on the top cancel, leaving me with the three and the X minus five. Okay, sweet. And at this point, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, let me just distribute through to prove X squared minus five X minus eight X equals 3x minus 15. And if we combine like terms, we'll see that it ends up being x squared minus 16x plus 15 equals zero. And this is the exact same as the last slide, right? We know how to factor it out because it's the same problem. So you have the combining method. You can combine these two into one fraction and then cross multiply. You have the LCD method where you choose the LCD that kind of includes all the common denominators and then distribute through. Those are our two methods. Now let's take a look at the next one. This one is a beast and we could use the combining method. It will totally work. Typically though, when the LCDs are super complicated and advanced here, I just like to multiply through by the LCD because it can simplify things more rapidly. The LCD that I'm going to choose is, okay, it needs to include an X minus three for sure. It needs to include an X plus three for sure. And let's look at this term. Don't forget that it's good to factor all the denominators. It helps us to see the LCD more easily. This is a difference of squares and conveniently factors into X minus three times X plus three. So do I need to square both of these? Well, no, like I don't need to include more of them. The point is I already have the X minus three and the X plus three included. So think about what will happen when I multiply by this. It will cancel these and I'll be good to go. So great, I've found my LCD. So let's multiply by it. Okay, so I'm multiplying by X minus three times X plus three. And remember that's in the numerator of the fraction. So put it over one. So let's distribute this with my terrible pen now. This is supposed to be, all right. Uh, so I'm distributing through to the six. So think about what's happening here. This X minus three is gonna cancel with this X minus three, right? And I'm gonna be left with the six and the X plus three. Okay, next, oh, I have my equal sign. Now I'm going to be distributing to this middle term. So let me take away this monstrosity. This is going to the middle term. And actually, because the bottom is X minus three times X plus three, it cancels with both things on top and I'm left with eight X squared. Sweet, that was convenient. Next, I'm going to distribute to this final term. Uh, I have the minus, I have the four X 
and the x plus 3 is going to cancel with the x plus 3. I still have an x minus 3 on top. Okay, sweet. So I know I chose my LCD right because I've canceled all the denominators. This is a quadratic. I will fly through it because this video is getting long. And young students cannot focus for that long is what my um, ed psych professor told me, educational psychology. Do you sometimes just talk to people while doing math? It's kind of a skill. We're combining like terms uh, 8x squared minus 4x is 4x squared. I need to bring these guys over. So I have 12x minus 6x, that's 6x, and I need to subtract 18 to the other side. Oof, these are very tricky numbers, but I do see an LCD. Let's divide every single thing by 2. Do, do, do. 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. This looks a bit more factorable. Let's see. I have 0 equals. I'm going to need a 2x. I'm going to need an x. Let's use some factoring wizardry. I think if I add 3 and subtract 3, uh, that should do the trick. And I'll let you figure out why if you don't know. So it looks like x is going to be equal to 3 over 2 and negative 3. But wait. Notice. If I take the negative 3 and plug it into this denominator, what's negative 3 plus 3? Oh no, it's 0, which means that because I'm not allowed to divide by 0, if I plug negative 3 into this fraction, and also actually into this fraction, I will get fractions with zeros on the bottom. That's not allowed. So this is the elusive extraneous solution which means that even though it looks right, it will cause me to divide by zero in the original equation. This is my only answer. And for the sake of time, trust me, it works in both denominators. It's, I'll, I'll let you figure out why. It's not too, not too hard to figure out why. Okay, so that's it. So summary, we have two methods. First of all, we can combine the fractions like back in example two so that there's just one on each side and then cross multiply. Or we can do like we did in the last two, multiply by the LCD to cancel all the denominators. Don't forget extraneous solutions like negative three in the last problem can happen if it forces you to divide by zero in the original equation. Thanks for watching this decently complex and needing of practice section. See ya.